Testing to see which one's better. I don't know, it feels the same. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to compare the two beefy 38 mil stanchion super enduro forks from Fox and RockShock, the 38 versus the Zeb. We're gonna get into all the specs and details and what's different and mostly what's the same between these things and then how do they feel differently out on the trail. Well, we made an in-depth video on each one of these forks individually because they're kind of big news, right? They're the latest and greatest super enduro forks from each of the leading dominant 800 pound gorillas in the mountain bike suspension world, Fox Shocks and Rock Shock. Um, why I'm calling them super enduro, I, that's kind of just the term I made up myself. I think that, you know, previously we had the Lyric from Rock Shock and the 36 from Fox and both brands are really trying to push the limits of what they can do with mountain bike suspension and most in particular for their fastest enduro racers, right? So enduro racing is becoming a huge sport these days in the mountain bike world and the guys doing it are pushing those bikes which are longer travel single crown fork bikes that they pedal uphill and go super fast on downhill. They're pushing those things to the absolute limit and the faster you go, the more suspension and the better suspension you need and the more fine tuned it needs to be and the kind of stiffer your bike needs to be in handle. So a lot of people commented on these forks and frankly I kind of agree, right? Like each one of these things is not for everyone, right? I mean if you're riding a long travel enduro bike and you're like a, a larger rider that kind of really enjoys a stiff feeling fork um, or simply you're just a really advanced rider and you're riding really fast, the faster you go and the bigger you are, the more you're going to notice the actual differences and benefits of a 38 mil stanchion, really stiff controlled fork. Um, just like you'd notice the differences of riding a trail bike and a downhill bike on the same exact trail, right? One is just more purpose built for what you're doing with it. So both of these brands are coming out and innovating their suspension um, and I would say, you know, sometimes suspension innovation kind of trends more towards, hey, we innovated this for the average rider who's out there riding mountain bikes as a weekend warrior. And sometimes it trends towards, hey, we innovated this because, you know, we have professional athletes that are the best in the world and they need this. And I think that's kind of where both of these things came from. The cool thing is us as average riders get to enjoy them if we like as well. So without further ado, What's different and what's similar about these? Well, to be honest, like they're both super enduro 38 mil stanchion forks, and there's probably a lot more that's similar than that's different. So I'm gonna try to focus mostly on the differences. And if you really wanna get nerdy on these things, like I mentioned, we have an individual video for each one of these forks, which accompanies with um, an in-depth article with all the specs and details and everything. So to talk about some of the key differences between these things that are probably something you're gonna wanna consider if you're considering buying one of these things, um, right off the bat to me is price point, right? So RockShock is coming in at $699 to $999. So $999 being their Zeb Ultimate, like the premium creme de la creme top of the model Zeb. And Fox is starting at 949 for the performance series and going up to 1199. So 999 versus 1199, there's a pretty sizable difference in price right there. Um, so that's a pretty big difference that I think is something to consider if you're looking at both of these forks. In terms of weight, um, there's claimed weights all over the place for every mountain bike part out there. And claimed weights are confusing because it's like, well, is it a 29er or a 27.5? Is the steer uncut? Is it not? Um, both of these are 29ers in 170 mil travel. Steer is the same length. We weighed them ourselves. You can see that right now. Five pounds, one ounce. Oh! <laughs> two ounces lighter and the Zeb won by two ounces. I'm so and I just can't hide it. it was four pounds, 15 ounces versus five pounds, one ounce of the 38. That's two ounces is kind of negligible in my opinion when it comes to a fork. Um, but so that's weight. 
What else is different between these things? Well, the 38 is not available in 190 mil travel. The Zeb is, they make a 190 mil travel single crown Zeb, which is pretty badass. Um, so if you're looking for a 190 mil travel single crown fork, you kind of only have to go with the Zeb. Um, next up, dual position air. So that's something that uh, RockShock uh, has been doing a long time. And actually Fox did a long time ago as well. It used to be a lot more popular and then bike geometry got different, but now it's coming back and it's came back with the Zeb in particular for e-bikes, right? So the e-bike variant of the Zeb has a dual position feature and it goes from 150 to 180. So what that is, if you don't remember those forks, um, basically you always ride the thing at its max travel, so in 180, but when you're going uphill, when you're pedaling that e-bike up a hill, you can flick a knob, get that thing down to 150, it lowers the front end of your bike by 30 millimeters, which puts it in a much more comfortable climbing position. Um, kind of keeps that front wheel on the ground, keeps your body weight um, leaned forward so you don't feel like you're constantly popping wheelies, which is a problem with long travel bikes pedaling up a hill, and it's definitely a problem with an e-bike because you have a lot of power to the rear wheel. So that's an interesting feature that RockShot came back with for the Zeb. Um, each brand has sort of the like e-bike own specific things that have their own various tunes and stuff. So if you are an e-biker, look into that. Um, they both kind of work great for e-bikes and are e-bike approved and have their own e-bike variants. Um, the Zeb in particular has the dual position, whereas the Fox 38 does not. Um, let's see, what else is different? Well, the only other different things are not that big of a deal, but I'll get into them. So the axles are a little bit different. RockShock uses what they call torque caps. So both of these have 15 by 110 axles. Um, RockShock uses torque caps on that 15 by 110 axle. And that is basically the surface area around that 15 mil axle is um, much larger, right? So you need torque cap end caps on your front hub to take advantage of this. And it'll give you a huge amount of surface area around that axle, which increases stiffness a ton. And it's actually pretty noticeable on my trail bike going, uh, actually with a pike, going from a, a front wheel that doesn't have those torque caps on it to going one with the, with, that did have it. You hear the only thing, you guys are really flying out you can notice a pretty big difference because there is a lot more surface area. So that's kind of RockShock's answer to why they don't use 20 millimeter axles on these enduro and trail bike forks and how you can kind of get a ton of stiffness there. Fox does not have that. It's just the traditional 15 by 110 axle, but a fancy trick that they do have in their axle, they call it a floating axle. So the way that this works is you can get it dialed in so that you can tighten everything down and the lowers don't have any flex. So the concept here is that, you know, no matter how close they can engineer this, right? Like there's always gonna be some amount of play, some tolerance where there's gonna be a little bit of flex when you tighten that front wheel and it clamps down on the hub. And like, you can see that flex, right? That flex puts these lowers at an angle and that apparently causes friction, right? So, in order to reduce that friction, Fox came out with this floating axle um, to basically keep the lowers perfectly straight. Is that a monumental change or a small change? I don't know, I'll leave that up to you to decide, but nonetheless, like we've gotten so far with everything in the mountain bike world, especially suspension, that the little things these brands are you know, engineering these days are small gains one by one to really make the things just iterate better and better and better every year. And that's kind of the difference between the front axle on this thing and the Zeb. Um, another thing, speaking of like small, interesting little gains, Fox has these air bleeders. So the idea here is that the air pressure in the lowers of the fork, not the air spring, but the lowers of the fork will actually increase if you change elevation, right? Yeah. So that is actually wrong. Uh, originally, I have thought that these little air bleeders um, more had to do with elevation pressure, but I've since learned from a good friend of mine who is a former suspension engineer at RockShock and now a bike frame engineer, um, that elevation actually doesn't affect this too much because it can't expand. So what it is, why you need these, you do build up air pressure in the lowers, but that actually just happens naturally from the fork cycling. And from the fork cycling, um, it basically can create air pressure in here that makes it not feel right, and you kind of want that to be equalized. It's more 
more of an issue on longer travel forks, which is why basically every dirt bike out there, a motocross bike has some type of like air bleeder system on it and why Fox had these on their 40, their eight inch travel downhill fork um, before they moved it to the 38 and 36. So more relevant for longer travel forks that are getting ridden faster with harder hits. Um, and it's not necessarily because of elevation, it's more just because of when it cycles, it somehow sort of pulls air in here and creates pressure and needs to be equalized. You can do this yourself with a thin zip tie. If you kind of drop it into the dust seal and pull it down there, it'll actually like equalize it on a normal fork. That's a trick that some people do. Whether that's super necessary or not, or if anyone would ever tell a difference between, you know, riding this fork with there being any air built up in here and then if you equalized it, that's up for debate, but either way, it is more important on longer travel forks. Air does build up in there, and that's why Fox put those on there. Both forks, of course, have a single rebound adjustment and a uh, independent high and low speed compression adjustment on the damper side. Uh, they both utilize air spring tokens to reduce the air volume if you want to change how progressive the suspension is. Um, Fox has an elliptical steerer tube. So again, that's a stiffness thing. Uh, we unfortunately don't have the equipment to really like put these things down to a extensive scientific test to see which one's stiffer than the next. Um, but kind of the verdict is after riding them, the stiffness is pretty much equal. Um, they're both considerably stiffer than uh, their counterparts, right? So the, the Zeb being uh, like the evolution, uh, bridging the gap between the Lyric and the Boxer, and the 38 bridging the gap between the 36 and the 40. Um, way stiffer than a 36, way stiffer than a Lyric. Again, you're gonna notice that stiffness the faster you're going, the harder you're riding, and the heavier you are. Um, so keep that in mind. Another small difference, I will never stop talking. The Zeb uses a 200 millimeter rotor post mount. So that's the small size rotor that you can fit on this fork. Um, I think you can go up to like 220 or 230 on both these things. The 38 uses a 180 post mount. So if you do prefer a 180 rotor, you can actually fit it on here. And if you do prefer a 200 rotor, you will need an adapter, whereas the Zeb you won't. So. Um, Man, that is really kind of like your, your spec details that are different between these two things. And well, now let's talk about how they actually feel on the trail. On trail performance. I wish I had better news for you guys. Um, I, I think, you know, like I've mentioned, suspension in the mountain bike world has innovated very far right now. And it's very, very optimized and both of these brands, right? They're like the, the two big gorillas in the industry in terms of just innovation and performance, hands down. And they're both kind of going for the same thing, right? I mean, they wanted this fork to work for that super, super enduro rider that I mentioned. And the performance they're going for is kind of what, you know, it's the same. It's the same. They have the same goal, right? For, for that type of racer. And they want like great small bump absorption. They want it to like dive into the travel and have mid stroke support. They want it to be as progressive and have that progressivity be tunable via tokens. Um, they want independent high and low speed compression. So they're kind of, they kind of have like the same overarching goal. And I'll be dead honest with you guys, like I cannot pick one of these over the other. You know, I think if you rode them blindfolded, it would be really, really hard to tell which one you were on. Um, I, I wish I had different news for you, but they both work phenomenally well. I kind of got more into the performance of each of them in their individual videos. But like I said, like each brand kind of has their like very similar, if not identical goals of what they're going for in terms of how they want that fork to feel. They don't have like opposing ideologies. One of them doesn't think it should feel like this on trail versus this on trail. Like they have pretty much the same mentality when it comes to you know, what a mountain bike fork should feel like for a world-class enduro racer. Don't you're do repeating nothing. yourself, you know that? Um, on a, you know, a modern enduro bike. So they feel amazing, they're incredible. Um, definitely a, a step up from the 36, definitely a step up from the Lyric, uh, totally equal side by side. And if I, you know, honestly, if I were to tell you it felt any different on trail, it would be BS. And I, and I think a lot of things in the mountain bike world, when you're comparing such similar products, you really get into this like head case placebo effect and you're kind of like overthinking stuff and inventing things feeling differently in your own head. I think that's pretty common in mountain bike reviews and I try to avoid that myself. 
and I try to like not put in other variables like using the same bike and same tires and same trail and just switching one variable at a time. So yeah, <laughs> they're, they're both neck and neck. So if you think there's a big performance difference between the two, there just isn't. So whichever one you end up going with, uh, it's a great choice. It's, they're both amazing forks and are gonna work super well for that category that they're intended for of being like super enduro, long travel, fast, you know, fork. Um, yeah, there you go. Well, I hope that was valuable for you guys and uh, useful if you're considering one of these super enduro forks. Drop a comment below, RockShox Zeb or Fox38. I'm very curious. And also, please hit that thumbs up button if you've made it this far in the video. And please subscribe to the channel. I think you will love all the mountain bike content we post because if you've watched this video comparing two enduro forks for this long, you're, you're really, really into this shit. So you should definitely subscribe. All right, see you later.